Hello and welcome to lesson one, where we're going to be learning about variables. So the first thing we want to do is start Visual Studio. And we're going to be creating a new project. We're going to make a console app.net core project. Double click that. And we're going to rename our project name to Blue Lessons. And we'll create that. It's going to create this default program.cs right here. A project called Blue Lessons and a solution with the same name. So first, I want to rename this project. We're actually going to call it Lesson 1 because we're going to be adding projects to this as we keep going. So we're going to have Lesson 1 here and we'll have Lesson 2 and 3 all in the same solution. You can think of a solution as kind of a folder which contains your projects and then your projects have your programs in it. This is actually what the code that is running inside of the project. And we're going to rename program.cs to variables. And it's going to give us this message. You are renaming a file. Would you also like to perform a rename in this project for all references to the code element program? where program was the original name of our file. We're going to hit no because we're going to do this manually so that we actually know what it's going to do. So the file name used to be program.cs. We changed it to variables.cs. It also changed this tab up here. And it's always good to have your class name be the same as your file name. It's not mandatory but it's a good practice. So we're going to change program to variables. And we'll save that. Now we're going to run this hello world program just to make sure it's working. So we're going to come up to the play button, press it, and we've entered debug mode and we can see that it printed out hello world. So that works, let's close that. And we're going to delete this line and we'll start the lesson. The first data type that we're going to learn about is a string. And the way that you declare it is first you're going to type the word string, the name of our data type, and then the name of the variable that holds that value. We're going to call it my string, and you use a semicolon to end a statement in C sharp. Now a string can hold values that are like uh, words or sentences, uh, characters, things like that. So we made our variable, which we named my string, and it holds this data type string, but we're never using it. So right now it has no value in it. So we're going to hit enter, go right below it, and we're going to use this variable. We're going to put the variable name, my string, and we're going to use the assignment operator to give it a value. And the assignment operator is just an equal sign. And now we're going to actually give it the string value that, it's, that it contains. And we do that with double quotes. A double quote denotes a string literal. That just means it, it is the raw value without having to be inside of a variable, a constant value. So we're going to just call this, this is a string value. And we'll end our statement with a semicolon. So now let's print out our string. We're going to do use the console keyword dot write line. And this is a method and you call methods using these parentheses. And we're going to put our string value in it. And if we hover over write line, we can see that it writes the specified string value followed by the current line terminator to the standard output stream. And if you look here, it says console, write line, string, and then the name value. So we're going to give this method a string value, which we're doing right here by giving it 
our my string variable and the value of that string is this is a string value. So this is going to write this is a string value to the console. So let's run our program to see. And sure enough, it does. This is a string value. So we, we finished our first program. But let's go ahead and continue on. We're going to make a second variable. It's also going to be a string. So we're going to start by saying the data type, which is string. And we're going to call it my second string. And we're going to end that with a semicolon. And now we give it a value. We do that by saying my second string equals, and let's call it 1,000. Now, this isn't actually the number 1,000. This is a string representation of 1,000. So it's not like I have 1,000 of something. It's more like me saying 1,000. So if I were to compare this with the number 1,000, it wouldn't be equal and the computer wouldn't know what to do. If I actually wanted to store the number 1,000, I would use what's called an integer value. And we can declare an integer variable by using the keyword int and then naming our variable we're going to call it my int end with a semicolon and now we're going to assign it the value 1000 so my int assignment operator equals 1 0 0 0 1000 so this is the way that you would have actually written it if you wanted to store the number 1000. Let's do one more variable, one more integer variable. What we've been doing before are two lines. To first initialize the variable, we're going, we, we declare the variable here, saying that it's an integer type and the name of the variable, and then we give it a value right here, my integer equals 1000. But here, we're going to do it all in one line. We're going to give it a data type, int, we're going to declare the name of our variable, my second int, and now we can go right into using the assignment operator and give it a value. We're going to give it the value of 2. And there, we did it. So now we made our second integer value, and it has a value of 2. So now let's print these things, uh, let's print the, the rest of our variables out to the screen. So we're going to say console dot right line. So what I want to do here is I want to give labels to all of our variables so we know what they are. So I'm going to make a string and I'm going to say my second string. And here I'm going to use the plus sign. Now this isn't for math. So this is, doing, this is going to be doing something called string concatenation. So on the other side of this plus, I'm going to give it the my second string value. So right here, I just put my variable, my second string. And so this plus sign says, I have strings to my left and strings to my right. So what I'm going to do is string concatenation, and I'm going to merge these strings together into one string. So it's not going to do math like it would with numbers. Instead, it's going to merge these strings together. And let's run it real quick just to see what it does. We can see we printed our first string value. And then we print my second string, the label, and 1,000. So that's good. Now let's do the same thing with our other two variables. So console.writeLine. my int, and we're going to use string concatenation, and we're going to do my integer. So even though this one is a number, but this is a string, it's still going to use string concatenation because it has a string on one of the sides. It sees that it has a string here, and it says, okay, I'm going to be using string concatenation. And let's do this with the last variable we have, so we'll use console.writeLine dot 
my second int plus and then just like we did with everything else we put the variable name my second int so this works well uh, this is how you use strings and how you use integers but what if you wanted to do a decimal value uh, something with a point in it so some sort of fraction say you're doing math and you need to know uh, 2.12 this is going to say cannot implicitly convert type double to int an explicit conversion exists are you missing a cast so it is trying to change this value into an integer and it doesn't know how but we don't want to put this double into an integer we want to create a new variable and you've probably already picked up what it's called the variable type is double and we'll do the name of our variable my double and now we can give it a value and we can give it the 2.12 value. Here, it's not going to complain because this is a double literal, just like we have string literals, we have integer literals, and we have double literals. It is storing that value inside of my double. And we'll print this out to this console. say my double and use string concatenation to say to the name of our variable my double and then to close the, out the program we're going to say console.writeline and we are just going to say goodbye and that's when the program will exit so let's run it see what we did we have our this is a string value and then our labels my second string 1000 our two integers are double and finally we end the program with goodbye all right so a little bit of an overview of what all we learned we learned how to initialize string values string variables right here how to print them out to the console using console.writeline We've learned that the string 1000 is not the same as an integer 1000. The way that you do integers is using the int keyword as the data type, and then you can create your integer variables. You can use string concatenation by using a plus sign and having strings on either on one side. And it doesn't matter where you do this plus, you can keep going. So I can say plus, and add some exclamation marks at the end of here. And if we run it, you'll see it keeps adding onto the end of that string. So it's no problem for the computer. It can do however many string concatenations you need. And lastly, we learned about the double data type, and it can hold decimal values, things with points in them, floating point values. And now I am going to assign the task for lesson one it's something that you should be able to complete all on your own, and it's just going to reinforce the things that we learned. And to start, we're going to make a new project for this task. So we're going to go up to our solution, and we'll right-click, Add, New Project, and we'll click right here, ConsoleApp.net Core, and we'll give our project a name. We're going to call it Lesson 1 task. We'll hit create. And here we can see it created a new lesson with another program.cs in it. So I'm going to take some time here and I'm going to rename program.cs to variables task. And I'll hit enter. And we get that same message of you're renaming a file, blah, blah, blah. So we can hit yes because we know what it's going to do. It's going to change this class program to class variables task. And we can hit yes. And we'll see it did exactly that. And now we can run it. Except we see that it's running our old project. So we'll close that. 
and we can see that the play button here says lesson one. The way that we change this to run our new project instead, is we're going to select our project, right click, and we're going to set as startup project. And you can see that the startup project is going to be bolded like it is here. That's how you know what you're going to be running. And now, up here it says Lesson 1 Task. You can click it, and it's going to say Hello World, which is what is inside the program right now. So to get the Lesson 1 Task, we can go to finalparsec.com, go to the Blog Entry, and select C Sharp Lesson 1. And I'll send out this link. It'll be in the description. From here, we can scroll down, and we'll see the notes from today's lesson, and then below it is the task. So let's copy all of it, go back to Visual Studio. We're going to select everything in this file and paste over it. And scrolling up to the top, we see that our task is, in this program, you will need to make the following variables with the given data types. My name, which holds a string value, my age, which holds an integer value, and some decimal, which is going to have a value between 0 and 1. An example would be 0.223. Use string concatenation and console.write line to print, hello, my name is my name, I am my age, a number between 0 and 1 is some decimal, where the variable contents are displayed between these two angled brackets. So I'll give you some time to do that, and we can check it when you're done. Yeah, it looks like that program's good. Just run it real quick. Yeah, it's all right. Hey guys, that's the end of the lesson. I post videos every Tuesday, and if you want to see more, like and subscribe. I'll see you next week.